Hey guys, it's Mr. Josh. Um, so, a couple things. First of all, I bet you could tell that my face is sunburned pretty bad. I'm sorry for that. Uh, it, it, ow, hurts, ow, ow, stop that. Okay, anyways, so what I wanna talk to you guys about today is I was reading the rest of Hebrews last night. And you guys know I'm a teacher at Elmdale right across the street from the church, right? Yeah, so, um, and you know, a lot of teachers give homework, right? Can I let y'all in on a little secret? I hate homework. Yeah, that's right. A teacher hates homework. So, you know what? I never give my students homework. Now, I have two rules with that, okay? First of all, if they don't do their work in class, then they have to do it at home, okay? Because that they're, they're not doing it at school. They have to do it somewhere, right? I think that's fair. But second of all, I only give homework if it's useful, okay? Writing down numbers on a piece of paper, not the most useful thing in the world. But sometimes I'll have an activity like, hey, go learn how to cook a meal, okay? And that's a real life skill that I'm trying to, I'm wanting to teach them. In fact, I got some teacher homework here. This book is a book that I've read and I've done homework on this book before, which teaches me how to, me how to be a better teacher. Now, going back to why we're here, I'm saying all this because in Hebrews, there is two chapters at the end in which the writer of Hebrews assigns us as Christians homework. Okay, let's let's get into the lesson and I'll show you what I mean, okay? Okay, guys, so let's just jump right into it. So today we're going to be looking at Hebrews 12 through 13. And these are the two chapters where, like I said, the writer of Hebrews gives us some homework. He gives us some uh, actual task on how to live out what he's taught us. And I really think it's interesting because it's just like a teacher did. In the first few chapters, if we remember, hold on, there we go. Okay, if we remember what we talked about, the author talked about a lot about Jesus. Specifically, he talked about how Jesus is God's word come to life. Jesus is before Jesus became a man, he was the uh, embodiment of God's word and God's power in that word. We also talked about how Jesus is the hope for the new creation. Okay, so one day heaven and earth will be recreated, and Jesus is how that happened. His sacrifice allows us to be a part of that new creation. Next, he's the, next we talked about how he's the eternal priest. Now, remember what that means is uh, back in the Old Testament times, priests had to be the ones to talk to God for the people and to offer sacrifices for the people. Jesus became that ultimate sacrifice, as we talked about here, and now is the priest for us. And when we talk to God, we talk first through Jesus, then to God, which, again, Jesus is God, so it's, we're talking to God himself. Okay, And then, like I just said, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. We don't have to sacrifice animals anymore for uh, every single sin, but Jesus' one sacrifice covered all of our sins. So, when, uh, so after all that, like I said, the author gives us some homework. He then says, okay, now I've just told you all these things. I've told you all the reasons why Jesus is perfect the best, uh, why he's better than anything we've had before, um, all the good things that we learned from him. Okay, well now here's how you actually live that out. Here's what you do to make practical use of all of these things. And the first thing he talks about is in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Now this is one of this is a pretty famous verse in the Bible. Uh, in chapter 1, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Um, uh, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, endurance, it's a big word. Endurance means with strength that doesn't give up. Okay, You know, you run and you, you just, at the end of a lot of running, you just kind of give up and, you're, and your body just wears out. Okay. Endurance speaks to me that there's some kind of training involved, okay? We're not going to be able to run 100% right off the bat a whole mile, but if we, 
if we build up our endurance, build up our strength, then we'll be able to do it with ease. And that's kind of what they talk about or the writer in Hebrews talks about. We're not running an actual race, but what we're doing is we are building up our strength and our faith to be able to uh, go through life as a Christian. It's hard being a Christian, y'all. Jesus never said being a Christian w would be easy. He never said following him would be easy, but we can train ourselves to build up those faith muscles and be able to uh, be able to run it. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the next section. Now, this part is from chapter twelve, verses three through seventeen. And as I'm re as I'm going over these guys, feel free to pause the video uh, and read the those that section for yourself. Come up with your own ideas, and then you can listen for uh, me talk about the rest of it. Um, so chapter three through seventeen uh, really teaches us how to focus on Jesus grows your relation oh sorry focusing on jesus grows your relationship with god i'm sorry i wrote that and i still messed it up so uh gives all kinds of examples and uh reasons why focusing on jesus grows your relationship with god and it talks a lot about discipline now some of you might know discipline as uh when you do something bad your parents might come at you with a switch or something now in this case discipline what we're talking about is the ability to look at yourself and go okay i need to do this i'm going to do this even though it's hard i'm going to push myself to do this so uh, like waking up and reading your bible every morning it takes discipline to do that it's not easy waking up believe me i know but pushing yourself to be that grows your focus with jesus and uh grows your relationship with god yeah, pretty cool. If I ever pause like this, it's just me looking over my notes and making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so the next part is chapter 12, 18 through 28. We cannot be shaken. And you all know that sh uh, that song. Uh, it's by Building 429. It's, no, we won't be shaken. We won't be shaken. Okay, I love that song. And I put it in here because it goes perfectly with this next part. Um, it, 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 it talks about a, a few of the people that was mentioned earlier how their faith was hard okay talk about moses and abel and jesus and the reason we talk about that is because to give us examples of even though they had times when their faith was shaken was um, tested what was it was really hard for them to have faith they still had faith and it tells us that the only reason we can't be shaken is through jesus's sacrifice and the power of god so putting all of our attention on jesus and god and what they what he's done for us really is the whole reason why our faith will or is the only thing that will keep our faith from being shaken without that it gets a little shaky sometimes okay and then now we're going into actual chapter 13 and so before now we talked about mainly our relationship with god chapter 13 focuses a lot about our relationship in the world um and specifically in chapter or verses one through seven and a little bit after seven i think there's um there's all kinds there's all kinds of different ways that you can love on people uh throughout verses one through all the way to uh 19 yeah um but these this chapter focuses on okay now as a human my expression of Jesus's love that's in me should be to love everyone and build up those who follow Jesus. Now, when I say build up, I mean, make, help make them stronger. If you know a friend who is uh, struggling with his relationship with God and understanding things, help him. Teach, teach them. Um, 
give them advice, okay? But also listen to people who helped you come to your faith. So for me, uh, so uh, chapter 7, uh, or not chapter 7, verse 7 says, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. So remember, uh, it reminds us that, hey, there's someone that's brought you to God, or there are people that have built you up for God. Okay, One of those people for me is Pastor Billy. And the writer of Hebrews says then, okay, look at how, look, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. So then it says, okay, look at the people who have led you to God. Look to the people who have built you up and then look and then do what they do. Walk, watch how they go about life. Are they going to bad places? Do, do they get up every morning and read their Bible? And whatever they do, imitate that. Be like them. And then on top of all that, you need to love everyone. Okay, that's how you can kind of take care of yourself with your relationship is imitating the, your leaders. But loving everyone is the next step so once you have been built up by your leader then your next job is to go out and uh, help other people whether that's people who are poor like in uh verse two uh two uh two and three um or the people that are really close to you like for me it'd be miss cartwright so i'd have to help her um I need to help build her up and love on her because that's specifically what Jesus has asked us to do. So like I said, those, those commands, those homework assignments are all through chapter or verses one all the way through 19. But there's one verse in there in particular that really stands out. And this is kind of just a reminder from the writer of Hebrews. And that actually is incorrect. It is not verse seven. It is actually verse 8. I apologize on that one. Okay, so the verse says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, the writer of Hebrews puts this in here so that we can remind ourselves that God will never change. And because God will never change, his love for us will never change. He will always love us. So when things look hard, when our faith looks close to being shaken, that's one promise from God that you can hold in your heart. In fact, if you want to memorize that verse, it's Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that can be um, a verse you say when you feel like you aren't very close to God or you're not, or you feel pretty upset. Remind yourself that Jesus loves you. Okay? All right, and then finally, we'll get to the last section I want to talk about, and this is in chapter 13, verse 20, 21, okay? And what, what I really like about this verse is that at the end of all of this, the writer makes a point to say, um, we... To Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now what the writer does here is he ends off his whole lesson, his whole homework assignment with praising God. And during all things, we should praise Jesus. Now remember, praise means to worship, whether that's singing, whether that's doing things that you know God, Jesus would like, whether that's praying and talking to God. Um. He ends that, and I think it's a. I really think it's a cool idea that through throughout this whole book, we've been talking about how to best praise Jesus, and then at the very end, he just goes ahead and praises Jesus, and gives us that example on how to praise Jesus. So, um, yeah, I mean that's basically the rest of Hebrews. Uh, there's a couple more sentences that are specific to the actual church. Uh, that this was written to. Uh, we don't really know. I don't think we know really which church it was written to, but it's a church back in um, New Testament times. And uh, 
so they're more they're not really more uh, much of the homework assignment versus just hey th look out uh i'm gonna send timothy to, to you to say hi and help you out okay so big takeaway from this is look at when you read these last two chapters these are a checklist of things that you can do to grow your faith and you know even though i don't like homework remember i said homework is useful if it's something practical if i've taught fractions i might tell someone someone to go bake a cake because that's a useful way of understanding fractions this whole book we've been taught that jesus love is great and he's done all these things for us now here's how you can put that into your own life and i think that's really cool that the writer of hebrews thought ahead on that okay guys so just kind of as a recap the writer in hebrews gives us some homework some um some ways for us to continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus and God. And here's what my challenge for you this week is. I want to see how many of these things that you can find a way to do. So, for example, the first, remember our first idea we talked about was put anything aside stopping you from following Jesus. Okay, so anything that's blocking your way, anything that's getting your mind off of Jesus, try to put it aside for a while. Maybe... Maybe it's video games, okay? If you're playing too many video games and not reading your Bible, I have to admit, I, I had to go through that a little bit too recently. I had to push some of the video games aside for a bit. Um, if you do, if you need to do that, do that. That's a great way of living out what these instructions are, okay? That's a what's called a good practical way. Practical meaning um, it works in real life. It's not just some kind of someone just telling us to do something no this works in real life uh so anyways for as much as these as you can try to find a way in your life that you can use this homework okay figure out a way that you can do any of these things so remember there's put anything aside that's keeping you from following jesus you got to keep your eyes on jesus make sure your focus is focus is still on him um Remember what Jesus did for you. Maybe even thank him for it. Uh, you need to pursue peace and holiness. And if you remember, one way that we do that is to look out for one another and help each other with God's, understand how God, um, what God's grace, how, how um, much he's forgiven us. Always be kind and continue to love each other is the next one. Um... And remember, the last few things that the writer talks about is that God and Jesus will be with you and will take care of you forever and ever. And they will never change and they will never stop loving you. That's one of your assignments is to remember that. And then I guess we'll just wrap up here with ending the same way the Hebrew the Hebrews ends. Okay, so let's read it together. Glory to Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.